And a great big howdy do. How's everybody doing this evening? Lord have mercy. Whew, what a day it has been, folks. I tell you what's the truth. What a day. I've been up since about four o'clock this morning. <laughs> I had a bad dream. And I was running from something or other. I don't even know what it was. can't remember. But anyhow. Whatever it was, must have been mighty close, because I started jumping and kicking and everything else, and I jumped right out of the bed, hit my knee right on the floor. That felt good. Oh, mercy me, mercy me. <laughs> well, before we get into it, <clears throat> I would like to say, Lord, thank you for giving us another day together to help one another out. Thank you for letting the family grow a little more and just blessed us with another day to celebrate it in your name amen oh mercy me mercy me now before i start saying hi to everybody i want to do things just a little bit different this time i'm going to start out with a story then i'll say hi to folks in between now this first one here it's oh, I say it's mighty good, boy, mighty good. And uh, if you folks don't care, let everybody know that uh, I'm just trying to focus on the stories and stuff because I got a bunch of them tonight. So I'm gonna try to get them all in. So if you folks wouldn't mind, uh, be sure and uh, let everybody know when they come in that I'm uh, just trying to focus on the stories and I'll say hi to everybody here just a little bit. Hey, Lisa, thank you so much for coming in, sister. It's a blessing to have you with us. All right, now this one was submitted by Hassie Rowland. She said, now back when I was young, listening to stories, my mama always told us there was always uh, one that my grandma always told us that always fascinated me. Said that her mama told her. Said her mama was real young back in the hill of Pennsylvania. So there's a patch of woods where they used to gather mushrooms and berries and things like that. <laughs> so one thing about these particular woods, though, is nobody will go into them. Not even to hunt nor fish. Said the old folks said it was full of haints and boogers. Some even believed it was cursed. Whenever it got dark, the dim old woods had a different kind of darkness in it. Kind of dark that would close in on you. And I almost felt like it was squeezing you. I always felt like there was a baker's dozen of eyes on you. And a body could always feel like there was something standing right behind you, breathing down your neck. Said the old folks always said there was no wizard that lived back in them woods. He said he went mad. Said folks at one time went to him for stuff, ailments, warts, and such. But after a while, said they noticed that he changed. Said he began walking through the woods. And he'd be talking to himself. And then he'd just take out a screaming like he was scared half to death. And said act like he was hiding behind trees from something or other. So a whole lot of times, you know, folks would seem like that. And they'd run up to him, you know, trying to find, you know, maybe thought it was a wild animal. But it was always nothing. At least nothing they could see. So that was also about the time folks noticed them old woods took on a life of its own. He 
Said great grandpappy believed. The old fella went crazy. He conjured up all kinds of stuff. Well, by the time he started acting strange, they were still out picking berries and stuff in them woods. Said so one evening, her and her brother was out of picking. Well, said they was, you know, laughing, enjoying herself and stuff like that. And said a lot of times they do stuff like that just to kind of get away from the house. Things like that, you know. But then, said they noticed darkness was setting in. And weren't no way they'd make it out before it got dark. Said they grabbed their old tote sacks and hightailed it out there just as fast as they could. Said they rounded the edge and they saw what looked like 20 people walking down the ridge. Except they was walking a tad off the ground and had solid white eyes. Said they run as fast as they could. Said they kept on running till they seen the edge of the woods. Well, as they got close, Said they seen this big old hairy thing sitting on a big old rock by the path. Said it had black hair. And big old green eyes. And had a long tail with it. Said it had a small tree it was playing with. And said they stopped and screamed, and it made a noise and run off. Said her brother pulled her, and they run for the field. Said they made it. Said they just kept a running. Said they looked back, and whatever that old hard thing was, so it was at the wood line of screaming and hitting that tree against the ground. Said so they never went back again. Said so one day, folks got to noticing that they didn't see the old wizard no more. He was never found nor seen again. But the, thing, the strange thing was, whatever it was that roamed them woods, never left. So, Jared, I hope you and the Ken folk enjoy this. And so, I love this family and you too, brother. May God bless you. Your sister, Hassie Rollins. Well, Hassie, thank you so much for sending that in, sister. God bless you for that. We sure did enjoy it, and that's a mighty spooky one right there. Yes, sir. Now then, I so said we got some mighty good folk in here tonight. Yeah, Angie, how you doing, sister? Sean, how you doing, brother? Stephen, boy, we boy, we chatting up a storm right before the stream started, didn't we? <laughs> hey, Judy, how you doing, sister? Good to see you, Judy. How you doing, sister? Sean, hope you're doing good, brother. There's Dustin. How you doing, brother? And Vodka. Good to see you, sister. Oh, hell, welcome, welcome, welcome. Sure is a blessing to have you with us. And there's Jimmy, as mad as always. <laughs> it wouldn't be right if Jimmy's mad, or weren't mad. If he's happy, I don't know what we'd do with him. <laughs> Lord have mercy, and we got Lydia. How you doing, sister? Casey, how you doing? How you doing? 
Bobbin, good to see you. And Eric, boy, how you doing, brother? And there's Joni, how you doing, sister? Jacob, how you doing, brother? Angie, how you doing, sister? Cheryl, Casey, Sarah, Lord have mercy. Mighty good camp folk. Jan, of course, we got a good old brother, Donnie Laws. How you doing, brother? Good to see you as always. And a good old brother, Alligator Horse. And then we got Angie. How you doing, sister? And Al, how you doing? How you doing? Always a blessing to have you with us. Hey, Fer, how you doing? Let's see. Hey, Whittling, how you doing, brother? That's all right, Donnie. I understand, brother. I understand that completely. Hey, Jen, how you doing, sister? Good to see you. Thank you so, so much for them kind words. God bless you for that. We've got a good brother, John. How you doing? How you doing? Then the other brother, John, the other John. <laughs> how you doing, brother? Hey, Daniel. How you doing, brother? Good to see you. And Florida, our awesome sister. Hey, Lama Go, how you doing? How you doing? And we got Starla. How you doing, sister? Good to see you. And a good brother, Glenn. Always a blessing to have you with us, brother. And we got Vins. How you doing? And Daryl. And we got the Love Bug. Awaken Alliance says, Howdy from close to. Bristol, Virginia, and Tennessee. Well, howdy do, howdy do from McMinnville, Tennessee. <laughs> hey, Big Bear, how you doing, brother? Hope you and the missus and the kin, uh, the kin folk, the, the youngins, hope you guys are all doing good. Hey, Wayne, how you doing, brother? <clears throat> all right, now, this next one here, oh, it's a spooky one, too, but it's a mighty good one. I told it, like I said, the members, like I said, a lot of members got to hear it uh, on the member stream here not long ago. But uh, I said, we'll tell you again tonight. Hey, Matt, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. And then we got Vonita. How you doing, sister? <laughs> They're doing great. Kids are wild, full moon. <laughs> yeah, I believe it. <laughs> hey, Carl, how you doing? How you doing? It's good to have you with us, Ken, folks. God bless you. God bless all you folks. And you folks watching home, God bless you. Anyhow, listen here. It's called The Haint of Irish Rosalie. This one was submitted by Mary Hallberg. Says, here's one that I remember hearing about growing up about a lady that moved to the hills. Said, right here in Tennessee, back in the 1930s. Hey, Pank Hodge, how you doing, brother? Hey, how you doing? How you doing? From McMinnville, Tennessee. Good to see you, North Carolina. <laughs> and welcome, sister. Good to see you. Hey, Pamela. How you doing, sister? <clears throat> and said, uh, anyhow, said Rosalie. Said, oh, said she was pretty, boy. Said, pretty as the day is long. Said she had long red hair, green eyes. But what got most of the fellers' attention was her accent. Says she come over straight from good old Ireland. Said her name was Rosalie O'Sullivan. Says she moved into the mountains. And says she was young and single. And says she become the new school marm. Oh, said all the boys, said they set up straight and smile, you know, give them them grins. It's just all toothy, you know. Oh, yeah, boy. And said, you know, said they'd bring her apples and flowers and stuff like that. 
said she was mighty friendly too you know I said, oh yeah I said folks so they really just enjoyed her company in general. Well, says she done a mighty good job at the school. And says she attended all the socials. Hey, Chris, that's all right. It's just a blessing to have you with us, Kimpo. And uh, says she attended all the socials. And see, back then, a teacher weren't supposed to be out late without an escort, usually like her daddy or brother or somebody. So, says she always went to the socials and things like that, and she'd go to preaching with the neighbors. Well, said eventually, said folks got to noticing, well, said her and the neighbor's husband, Getting just a little too friendly, if you know what I mean. So, well, about a month later, one morning, she didn't show up for schooling. So the boys would show up early to bust up wood and kindling and stuff like that to get a far built and things, have it warm for the other young uns and to stuff like that. Well, it says more and more young uns showed up. She still hadn't. And they waited and waited. And no Miss O'Sullivan. Said the school assistant, which was the eldest boy at the time, attended, told all of them to stay put. And he'd go to her house thinking she might have taken ill or, you know, something like that. Well, I said when he got there, so there she laid on the floor. So Miss O'Sullivan was gone. Said so little boy run into town fast as his legs could carry him. Said so he run into town, told the sheriff. And then they went and got the old doc. Said the old doc got there and got the notice and stuff and everything. Said the old doc said there was foul play. But as it turned out, said there was never no charges brought up on anybody. Said, well, right then, word started spreading. And then more and more, said more and more word got spreading that she was according more than just one married fella. That's something you just don't do, and especially back in them days during them times. That was highly frowned upon. Well, said about a week later, they had her funeral. And said it was a mighty good turnout. And a mighty purry funeral. Well, said about a week later, after that, said late one evening, said two brothers was walking home from preaching. Said as they got close to the bridge that they had to cross just to get home. Said they rounded the curve just before the bridge. Well, as soon as they rounded that curve and looked up, there she was. Said she stopped. Or said they stopped. And said she looked at them and just pointed down at the water. Then just faded away. After that, said a small family was going into town. Again, there she was on the bridge. Same thing. She pointed and faded away. Said this happened on several occasions. 
and one year to the day the married feller that she is walking to preaching with was crossing that bridge on his old horse. Well, as it turned out, see his old horse got spooked and slung him off. Said he went over the bridge and he too was gone. So after that, I reckon Miss O'Sullivan was never seen again. So naturally, you know how folks begin to talk and think. So some folks believed she loved him and was trying to warn him about what was to come. Whereas others think he's the one that took her life. And after almost, uh, yeah, he's the one that took her life after almost losing his wife and family and stuff and everything. And that was her doing that as payback. She says, which story you choose to believe? Well, that's up to you. Lord, that was a mighty good one right there now. Mighty good one indeed. Like I said, that one was extra spooky. <laughs> if I seen something like that. I tell you what, I'd need some new drawers. I'd need me some new britches, that's for sure. Hey, Sharon, how you doing? How you doing? Good to see you. Hey, Bass, how you doing? How you doing? Good to see you. Thank you so much for coming in and hanging out with us. And we got Gypsy, how you doing? How you doing? Good to see you, Kim, folk. Hey, Nets, how you doing? How you doing? Thank you so, so much for coming in and hanging out with us. It's a blessing to have you. Eric, hope you're doing good, brother. And Justin, hope you're doing good, too, brother. Now, this in here is one I've heard similar to it, but it's been a long time back. But now, like I said, I kind of like it when it comes in like this. When I get one that's one you know, ain't heard in a while, from a, especially from a different person. So, you know, that just means that uh, more and more people has, you know, know that same story. Keeping Appalachia. How you doing, brother? Good to see you. Good to see you. <clears throat> now, I said this in here is called the doctor. And the wood booger. Now, the one that sent this in to me wants to remain anonymous. Just because I uh, said that this story really has a connection with their family and said that they just really didn't want their family to get mad at them or anything for sending it in or whatever. So, I can understand that. Hey, LeBron, how you doing, brother? Thank you so much. Now, like I said, this is, like I said, the doctor and the booger. So back in the old days, back in the hills, so most folks had a granny doctor or a healer or somebody like that, you know, that they went to when they was ailing or something like that. But said there was doctors. And, you know, from time to time, they get called upon. One time, an old doc got a visit one day by a young boy saying that his pa was mighty sick. Said he told the boy he'd be there as soon as possible and then send him on home. Well, said it was getting kind of late when the boy first arrived and said that he was sitting there getting everything ready. And he took off and then got out, got his old horse out. 
Got his old horse out. Packed up his bag. I'm sorry, it was a mule. Yeah, I said he got his mule out and his doctor bag stuff. And said that mule was enormous. And said it was famous in that area for being so big. Said oftentimes. So oftentimes, folks would come to him to get that old mule to help him pull a tree that had fallen or something like that. And things, you know. But said that mule was so big. Said it was 19 hands high. So well, getting late. Said he got his old lantern. And took it. And put it on the end of a big old stick. That way he could hold it out there and see where he's going. Well, I said he took off, and I said the way he was going, where he had to go, where that little boy was telling him. I said it was about a two-hour ride. I said he knew he had to get there because the way the boy talked, said the old fella was mighty sick, mighty sick indeed. Well, I said as he was a uh, coming across the mountain. So he decided to go down a little path that cut through. Save him a whole lot of time. Well, so as he's come across the mountain, down that old path, and it was lit up by the old lantern. Said he heard something in the woods beside him. They got her looking around, holding that lantern out, going out through there. But he didn't see nothing. But I say he didn't put much into it. Being from the mountains, stuff, said he just figured it was old coyote or something other like that. Said his old mule started getting kind of uneasy. So he kept trying to, you know, jerk and jump on him stuff a little bit, you know. It was really getting like real skittish like. So he tried his best to keep that old mule calm by talking to him, things like that. Well, said he was coming down the hill. When all of a sudden, Whatever that was, it started getting closer and closer. So whatever it was had been following him. So all of a sudden it broke out in a flat run from the woods just behind him. Said that old mule tried to take out a running and a kicking. But it was too late. Said it come out of running. It's that thing was running through the woods. And said its feet, whenever it hit the ground, was a thump in the ground with each step. Showing how powerful the good size it was. Said it all happened so fast. Said the poor old fella. So he barely had time to even react. Said so he come out of the woods and jumped on the back of that old mule. So whatever it was weighed that back in down of that old mule so much that its back legs was a shaking and its shoes was a kicking out sparks along the rocks along the path. Said old Doc was just shocked. Said he didn't know what to do. So all he know to do was just hang on to that old horse for, or that old mule for dear life. So he jerked his head around and then the lantern to see what it was. And, you know, 
but to his surprise, they weren't nothing there. He said, luckily, he said he was right there at the path in where it opened up to a little old bitty field. And just at the edge of the field was that house. He said the minute he got there, it was gone. He said he felt the back end of that old mule pop up just in the blink of an eye. He said that thing took off running with everything he had. He said it was all he could do just to hang on. Well, said when he left the home after he doctored that man, said needless to say, he took the long way back home. As far as anybody knows, nobody else, before or after, encountered what he did that night. Now, boy, I thought that was a mighty good one too, right there. Ooh, mercy me, mercy me. I believe I'd have hopped off that mule. I'd have been so scared. I'd have picked that mule up, throwed him on my shoulder, and took off running. <laughs> hey, Gary, thanks so much, brother. God bless you. So glad you folks are enjoying these. Hey, Rob, how you doing, brother? Good to see you, man. Yeah, me and old Rob do some mighty good collabs, too. Yeah, Jen, like I said, I sure do try my best, too, sister. Like I said, I'm proud of my heritage and everything. Try to stay true to it, to it myself and everything else. <laughs> hey, Eliza, how you doing? How you doing? Yep, the big mew. <laughs> Hey, Hart, how you doing? How you doing? Good to see you. And then there's my awesome brother, Kyle. How you doing? <laughs> he said, no, I know Dread Secret. He's the Santa Claus. <laughs> hey, Brittany, how you doing? How you doing? And then Jonathan, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. Hey, Pooh, how you doing? How you doing? Thanks so much for coming in and hanging out with us. Oh, it sure is a blessing to have each and every one of you. And then there's old Doc coming in. Now, folks, this next one here, like I said, it's it's a little bit longer than the others. But it's wild, and like I said, it's it's one of them that's got a pretty good meaning behind it, too. <clears throat> uh, Steve, I can't remember if you did or not, brother. All right, now this one here was submitted by Bart Harris. He says, Jared, I'm now 72. But when I was a young boy, I remember hearing my great uncle tell a story that always scared me half to death and always seemed to pop up in my head at bedtime or during storms. That's right, 130. That's right, 130 watching. Yeehaw. God bless. We got the best kin folk in the world. He said, this happened somewhere around the Alabama area back in the old days, just before the Great Depression. So all my kin is from Kentucky. And my great uncle Huber, or as we all call him, Hugh, used to love to roam. So he'd roam around and go all over the place. All over. So sometimes they said that he'd be gone for pert near the year. Sometimes better for anybody even laid eyes on him or heard from him. So he'd take off, said never knowed when he was going to take off. So sometimes he just, 
he'd just just leave. Well, said one time, he said he was going to hop a train late one night and head out for Carolina. And said he did. So he took a little bit of old white lightning with him. So he finally said he got back, hopped on that old train, got in that old car, kicked back, started drinking. Said knowing he had a mighty long ride, he'd do like he usually done, and he'd finish the whole jar and go to sleep, like he had a hundred times before. Then next thing you know, he'd be at his destination. But this time, this time was a little bit different. Say, so remember having some awful strange dreams. So when he come to, say so it was dark, and he was looking up at treetops. Lord Joni, God bless you, sister. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You didn't have to do that, but thank you so, so much for that, sister. God bless you for that. Said he jolted up, real confused, wondering what happened. You know, how he got there and why he got, how, you know, just bum fuzzled, you know. <clears throat> Excuse me. Said he stood up, so still looking around, just completely lost. No idea where on earth he was. Said, luckily, the moon was shining. And it, Lord, Sharon, Fox, bless your heart. Sister, God bless you. You didn't have to do that, but thank you so, so much. Sister, God bless you for that. And look, you hear vodka vow. Lord, sister, I tell you what, you folks going to make my eyes water up here in a minute. Lord have mercy. Thank you so much for that. God bless you folks. Thank you so, so much. But see, he didn't have no idea where he was. Said, luckily, said the moon was a shining. And in the distance, said he could see a path. Said there's bras everywhere that was eating him up. I said he finally made it over to it. And he followed it. Well, so after a while, he got to where he could smell chimney smoke. So he knew he had to be close by to a house somewhere. So he kept following that smoke. Till he followed it to a small little old house. So he come out in a little old clearing. And there's a little old house. He said he went up and knocked. I said when he went up there and knocked. It's an old elderly man. With a cane answered. It seemed like it took that poor old fella forever just to get to the door. When he did, said the old fella kind of looked confused to see him. Well, said he told the old fella what happened. And he just shook his head and invited him in by motioning because he couldn't talk. Said so he went in and said the old timer brought him a drink of water. Well, said he thanked him right kindly and stuff, you know. 
stuff like that. Then asked him where he was. Said the old timer wrote, Bammy in the soot. So old Hugh just rubbed his head, trying to figure out just how in the world he got all the way to Alabama. So he sat there and studied on that and studied on that, but he couldn't figure it out. They kept going over and over in his head. Just couldn't figure it. So finally, he sat there rubbing his old noggin, and he asked the old timer where the nearest train station was. So he could hop on another train and head back to Kentucky. So the old timer just kindly grinned at him and shook his head no. Well, said that, that right there. So that really just throwed old Hugh for a loop. Didn't understand what he meant, but no. Well, I said about that time, the old timer started changing forms like said he shifted into an old witch woman but the funny thing was Hugh knew exactly who she was and said so he had wronged her many many years before before she died so not believing his eyes that old Hugh screamed and said, ain't no way. Said, You're dead. So I see him lower you into the clay myself with my own eyes. Said, there just ain't no way. Said she pointed a finger at him. Slowly started walking toward him and said, My body might not be in this world no more, but I'm still around, Hubert Grafton. And even without my frame, I never forget. Said he commenced to crying, to sobbing, to apologizing. Said she yelled, Hesh up, boy. Said, You know how to make it all, Jake. He said, which that meant back in the old days, they would say, make it Jake. That meant to make it right. So he said, yes, I'm, yes, I'm, I will. You have my word. You have my word. So she said, we'll see that you do. Because take my word. You don't want to see me there another time. Well, said so about that time, he woke up on the train that he started out on. Said so he jumped off and called another back to Kentucky where he stayed. Said so he never traveled again, but said that he did go the very night he got back and went back behind his daddy's barn and started digging. Said so he dug something up that he never told nobody. Whatever it was, he wouldn't tell them what it was. Said, but he did tell people, so he took it to where the old witch woman was buried, apologized, and laid it upon her grave, and said, and it vanished right there before his very eyes. So he told many people about that experience, and swore up and down that it was real. It really happened. A lot of folks told him it was just Maybe some bad shine, or he drunk too much shine, or said it was just a dream. But he said, no, it was very real. Said he'd had many dreams, but that was real. 
Said she done it. Said he didn't know how she done it, but she did. Said somehow he weren't in that train. He said that he was in that old house in Alabama with that old witch woman. Said then he always told everybody after that. With every person he told that story to, he always ended it with never wrong a witch and always, always treat them with respect. Boy, I tell you what, I read that and, and I tell you what's the truth, Lord, have mercy. I believe I got, I got goosebumps when I read that. I thought, Lord, have mercy. I tell you what. But like I said, I I said that that was a mighty good one right there. Hey you Lyra. How you doing? How you doing? So happy to say my friend Renee is out of the hospital. And she's doing good. Thank you so much for y'all's prayers, and I feel they helped. Amen to that. Amen to that. I tell you what, a lot of folks don't realize the power of prayer. But like I said, you take a whole mess of folks are praying for the same thing, and you'd be a good surprised how far any more prayers will take you. Hey, E.T., how you doing, brother? I seen you sneaking in there a while ago. I was just busy running my mouth. <laughs> Marcy, I like a good Bama Witch story. Oh, yeah, boy. I said, I got some mighty good and saved up for Halloween. <laughs> he said, I'm a shaking out my trouser leg. When I read it, I believe I did too. <laughs> but I said, hey, y'all, so I'm new to the chat, but been with y'all for the past month. I like it here. I play, uh, play Queen Laura in the background because Jared asked. I like so I like y'all, and I'm comfortable here. Well, that's good, brother, because let me tell you, uh, I said, or sister, I'm sorry, Ken, folk. <laughs> uh, like I said, we just, we just blessed to have you. That's the way we feel. Everybody's family. We're all Ken, folk. And, And like I said, we just, we're just a big old family here. We love one another. We support one another. We help each other. Sharon said, amen. That's the truth, brother. How many stories do you, you know, get a week? Just curious. Oh, quite a few. Steve said for witches. Have to hex you if you sleep with the Bible under your pillar. They can't do you any harm until they count every word in the Bible. Hey, Debbie, how you doing, sister? Good to see you. Late again, but I feel I'm here finally. Why, well, it's all right. Better late than never. <laughs> hey, Spitfire, how you doing, brother? Hope you're doing mighty good. Good to see you. And I hope your mama's doing good. How is your mama? I've had her in my prayers too, brother. Amen to that. We all can, folk. That's right, dear. Amen to that. Hey, Jaguar. How you doing, brother? That's right. Miss Barbara says, Amen. Hey, I'm so glad you just had fun down there, John. I said, I pray. I prayed that. You know, so have fun, and Lord take care of his wagons is down there, and he saw you through and saw you back. I'm so glad of that. Yeah, that's what me and Stephen was talking about there a minute ago before we went live. We were sitting there talking about uh, old, uh, building old mountain banders. Just about got all the stuff to make mine. Well, actually, I do got all the stuff. I just got to get the neck carved out and stuff like that. He said, my mother's going downhill. Started, oh, bless her heart. Bless her heart. I'm so sorry, brother. Sorry to hear that. We guys are definitely in my prayers. 
Gary said, we're all brothers and sisters in God's eye. Amen to that. Hope you're having a blessing, Jaguar, my brother. Eliza said, yes to banjos. Now, I do want me a banjo like a regular one. Uh, I said, hopefully I can save up one of these days and get me one. You can buy you can buy one from like Walmart, I think, it's for like, I mean, like, they do about like $130. So I said, hopefully I can be able to save up and do that. But uh, I said, uh, I kindly ordered some. Oh, yeah, I, I don't think remember if I told you or not. Hopefully here pretty soon, within the next few uh, days, maybe next week. Uh, yeah, I'll let, I'll let it know on one. Uh, uh, I'll let you know on the one of the streams here. I just ordered a whole mess of Jerry King TV stickers that I'm going to be giving to you folks absolutely free just to say thank you so much for being your amazing sales, being kin folk, and just to say, you know, how much I love you, just in a little small way. And with each sticker I send out, I'll be sending a personal thank you along with it. Kyle said, Jared, I've been drug free and sober for almost 35 years now, and I'm very proud of myself. Well, brother, I am so proud of you too. The good Lord has seen you through that hard time. You done more than most people hadn't been able to do. And let me tell you what, like I said, I'm more proud of you than you'll ever know, brother. Hey, he tell you, he got one. Johnny said, yeah, I like him old banders. Yeah, said, I got one. It's Dojo. Hey, there you go. There you go. Shoot, yeah. Hey, awesome, Eliza. Said, order a pint glass. Yeah, you can also get a, uh, you can buy yourself some Jerry King TV merch. Like I said, I got glasses. I got uh, slippers, all kinds of mighty good stuff. That's right, Buck. Man, I said, they're really neat stickers. And I tell you what, I said, you definitely getting one. Like I said, that's for sure. But like I said, I'll be giving them away absolutely free. <laughs> my good brother, Rob Harris. That's my angel brother right there. He says, I'll take a sticker, Jerry, but only if you and Lord bring it to me. <laughs> you and Lord need to come to Michigan. Well, brother, that's definitely on my to-do list. That's for sure. Come come see my good brother, Rob. <laughs> oh, Will said, I got a banjo. And give a coon hound headache with <laughs> I hear you. I started singing once, and every animal in the neighborhood signed a petition. I ain't allowed to sing no more. It hurt their ears. <laughs> oh, me. Well, folks, like I said, we can look up close on the air. So, I said, just want to thank each and every one of you so, so much for, for just being young and thanking us. Thank you, folks, so, so much for the super chat, super stickers. Like I said, you folks, you are a blessing. It really, truly are. Each and every one of us. I love you more than you'll ever know. But, anyhow, uh, <laughs> yeah. Juanita said, mail it in a package with you and Laura in it to me. <laughs> Mr. Travis said, thank you so much for the story. Well, God bless you. Oh, Debbie. Said, need some prayers, family. Said, broke my arm and my shoulders half out of place. Lord, have mercy. Said, need to say, men's of pain. Bless your heart. Bless your heart, sister. Well, I guarantee you, and I promise you, you're in my prayers. As well as I know everybody else will have you in there too, sister. Like I said, don't you worry. You'll be healed up in no time. Well, folks, I said, I want to thank you so, so much. And if I ain't badly mistaken, I believe Queen Laura is fixing to have a premiere up. Uh, she's getting the link now. 
Uh, Paula makes it. Paula says, hey, Jared, I'm going to send you a story soon. Well, shoot, yeah, I'll be glad to hear from you. Hope you, I say, hope you and Chris are doing mighty good, and it's a blessing to hear from you good folks. Uh-oh. Florence said, no, I was called a witch one time, but I ain't a witch. <laughs> Well, Sean, it's a blessing to have you with us. Thank you so, so much. God bless you. And yeah, like I said, once I get that banjo up and fixed up and everything else, like I said, I'm going to be writing some more old songs, like $3 Mew, and like old Whittling said, a $2 Chew. <laughs> I, I already got a half a song rolled about that. <laughs> it's kind of like a $3 Mew Part 2. <laughs> oh, mercy me, mercy me. Yeah, right there is Queen Laura TV. Her premiere is fixing to start here shortly. So, like I said, grab that link up, folks, and we'll head over there. Grab it up, grab it up, grab it up. And while you're there, be sure if you're new, please subscribe. She's on the road to 1K. And be sure, and like I said, run her playlist. She's trying her best to get, uh, get her monetization. I know we can get her there, folks. Sure enough. I said, even if you don't watch that playlist, you let it play in the background or something or other. But anyhow, folks, I'll hush now. You know me, I love to talk. <laughs> yep, I'm ending it, but I'm live. <laughs> God bless you, Tina. All right. Well, I love you bunches. God bless you and your kin. And have a good one. Now get your dancing shoes on and try not to dance them off.